The Rayan nephew Jamaica Premier League has reached the knockout stages yet again. The quarter-final round, the playoff here at the Mecca of Cricket, Sabina Park, on the, under the beautiful skies here in the parish of St. Andrew. On it comes against Portmore United. Twelve titles between these two, and they do battle here tonight. They have met twice already this season. Portmore winning one and the other a one-all draw. And they're here to do battle yet again, twice, as it's a two-legged tie in the playoffs. And what an atmosphere this promises to be. It is getting jam-packed here at Sabina Park on quarter-final night. This is how the bracket looks. The winner, well, a meeting against Cavalier in the semi-finals. Mount Pleasant, they await the winner of Waterhouse and Tivoli. They drew one all just moments ago. And that is the semi-final, which will be ready in just a couple of weeks from now. The teams were here, were here early. Of course, Arnett Gardens in their red and black. And Portmore in their blue. The coach is here early as well. Let's hear from Shane Nelson, the manager of Portmore United. But before him, Xavier Gilbert from Arnett Gardens. First season as Arnett Gardens coach and a playoff berth. I'm sure you're meeting expectations so far. Uh, yeah, so far um, things have been good. Um, and we want to advance to the semi final So we're going to see if we can come out tonight and put in the work. And hopefully we can get a, a decent result. It's a really young team. You've rotated really well so far this season. Have you settled on a strongest 11 or does it depend from opposition to opposition? Sometimes it depends on the opposition, you know. Um, every player has uh, different things. Um, and when we break down the, the opposition, if we think this, that this player is best fitting to suit us based on, than, than our, um, based on our style of play, then that person gets the nod. But also, it's what they put out in training, you know. Um, we look at what is happening on the training ground and um, from there we, made our we make our selection. After a promising end to last season, winning the All Island knockout, of course, it must feel good to have this young team back in the playoffs and competing at the highest level. Yes, most definitely, most definitely. And you know, it's 37 goals you scored in the regular season, not the highest by any stretch of the imagination. What sort of improvement do, you, do we expect to see as we come into the playoffs now? Well, it is the playoffs. Um, what we are doing in the league doesn't matter right now. It's what we are going out there. We are confident. I mean, Goals win games, but they say defense win championships, right? And we're in the playoffs, so it must have been something that we were doing. Either we're defending well or we're scoring well, but we know we have to score, and we're confident we're going to get goals. Yeah, you say you're confident, you say you're confident that you're going to get goals, but your leading goal scorer, Siobhan Walsh, is on the bench today. Any updates on that? Well, this is a team, you know. It's a team, and we play as a um, compact and we play complete. So even if you get 10 minutes, we are still confident that you can still score. But we are also confident with those that are going out there to give us what we need. Both teams making a couple of changes along the way. Yeah, no Joel Jones, Xavier Gilbert, and no Siobhan Walsh leading the line for Portmore United. Chris Taylor and Donald Oliver in the commentary. And let's hear some of the keys to the game from Leger Williams. Time for some more keys to the game, and this time it's for our second game. Arnett Gardens versus Portmore United. It's going to be a big one, and starting with the home team in this affair, it's going to be Arnett Gardens, and they have a, some very interesting keys, I think. First of all, their dynamism from midfield, their midfield runs. This Arnett Gardens team, they have a lot of talent in that midfield area, and they've been utilizing it for majority of the season, I think. They've been playing really well. We'll speak about the likes of Jaheim Thomas. They call him national. He's been great. Rashane Thompson, as of late as well, has been extremely dynamic with his runs. And those deep runs are what I think can cause this Portmore United team a lot of problems in this game. We already saw Rashane Thompson score against Portmore United in match week 25. I wouldn't be surprised if we see something like that yet again. And then we'll move on to the rest defense. It's been an issue. It's not only the positives that we highlight here on Keys to the Game. The rest defense has been an issue for Arnett Gardens this season. We saw it in a couple of games as well. The Portmore United game where they struggled and they conceded a goal against Siobhan Walsh. We also saw it early in the season against Tivoli Gardens where time and time again, right after Arnett Gardens lost the ball, they were cut open by one pass, one run. And that's not going to be good enough for Xavier Gilbert and his men. But they have a talisman on their team that can alleviate all of these issues. 
because the most important thing to do on a football field is score. And who can score? Fabian Reed. Seven goals to his name so far this season. Ten goals, I beg your pardon, to his name this season. The best goals per game ratio in the Jamaica Premier League this season at 0.77 per game. He's going to be vital to Arnett Gardens this game. Now we move on to Portmore United. They're a team, I think they have their fair share of issues as well, but they're a team that can cause anyone some serious, serious problems. I think they can do that first by defending deep. They have had one of the best defenses in the Jamaica Premier League this season, the second best in the Jamaica Premier League this season, as a matter of fact. And they do a lot of that by not pressing high, by not trying to keep teams out from you know staying as high as possible. They do it by defending deep. And with that stout defense, they've only conceded 16 goals in this Jamaica Premier League season. And they've been extremely efficient. And they've been efficient because when they do get a chance to attack, they do it through midfield creativity. Alex Marshall, he has been extremely, as per usual, extremely fantastic with what he has brought forward. Creating goals, creating shots, his goal creating actions and shot creating actions have been off the charts this season for Portmore United. He's also been their captain, their leader. Hopefully he can be their legend because he's also our player to watch in this game. Alex Marshall, such a dynamic player. We saw him here at this very stadium create moment after moment in high school for St. George's College. He's looking to do that again for Portmore United in this Jamaica Premier League playoffs. Donald, Chris, back to you. We have a lot more to show. We do have a lot more to show. Lejay Williams, for once, not too controversial with his comments. Very thorough as usual. And you can hear the hush around Sabina Park tonight. What do we have on our hands? Pedigree, check. History, check. Pride, check again. They can't wait for the contest to begin as they wait in the tunnel, designed specifically for their walkout tonight. Even coaches not involved in these playoffs here to watch this matchup unfold. A legendary reggae boy as well in Ian Goodison in the stands. I'm sure you wouldn't mind turning back the years to be a part of a spectacle that we are witnessing. Such beautiful decor around here at what is the mecca of cricket, but for now it is the mecca of football at Sabina Park as the Jamaica Premier League playoffs get on the way. We expect a lot tonight, Chris Taylor. They expect a lot as well in the stands. What a crowd. The colours ever present. The red of Arnett Gardens. There is the slogan, one day, one goal, peace. Something that we wish for all of Jamaica. The violence to cease and the love to spread. There are the two results. The head-to-heads for this season. Portmore, a 2-0 win initially. And then a one-all draw in the second half of the season. And it was the reverse last year with Arnett Gardens getting a victory in last season first match and then there was a draw as well so flipping the tide it's always been close between these two teams Portmore's biggest margin of victory a 5-1 win back in 2018 Arnett Gardens have never managed to score more than three goals against Portmore 3-1 their biggest margin of victory and that came last in 2021 it's always a stiff a close affair red versus blue there will be no purple well, maybe a bit, because this matchup is royal. And we anticipate some really good football here, and so too those in the stands. They are ready, and so are we. What do we have in store? Gardens at sea and Portmore United. 
Arne Gardens, Portmo United, the most decorated teams in the land of wood and water. And in the first phase of the Jamaica Premier League playoffs, one will knock out the other. This is the gravity of the contest, as it has always been over the years. In league format, it's a rivalry. In finals, it's a rivalry. And they have met at every sector of football in this country. It matters when they play all the time. It matters again tonight. Who will get the advantage heading into the second leg? We pause now for the playing of the national anthem. And so the formalities begin. They'll greet each other with a smile and then business. We are going to try to figure out the architecture of this game. Based on the paper, based on the starting lineups you'll see in a little while, you probably will be wondering how this will pan out. That's why we have Chris Taylor as the expert analyst here. Chris Mason is in the middle. He'll be assisted by Stephanie Dale Yeasing and Keone Denton. Nerissa Golson is the fourth official. They are the skippers. Fabian Reed on the left, Siegel Knight on the right. Arne Gardens, this is the starting lineup as we know it. The big news today, DeAndre Cunningham is out at right back, so the youngster Shadiko Wizard replaces him. There, Eric Edwards, of course, between the sticks. Wing Watson, who also comes in for Joel Jones, and Shivani Willis complete the back line in the middle of the park. Marlon Martin, Roshane Thompson, who has been preferred to uh, Shepherd these days, and Jaheem Thomas also there up front. Kimani Arboin, Fabian Reed, of course, uh, going at a prolific 10 goals from his 11 starts for Anik Gardens, the striker, and Kaim Dixon, of course, their number 24, looking to make the transition from the schoolboy football level, in which he's been absolutely brilliant. 
seems to be doing pretty well so far. 4 3 3 is what Arnett Gans will play. Four goals on the season for Kahim Dixon, including a brace. And 39 he scored in schoolboy football this season. Remarkable, the youngster. And uh, Fabian Reed, no man in this league has scored more goals in the Jamaica Premier League than him. He has 84. Fabian Parker Blacks Reed. The brilliant Tyrone Williams between the six, the 27 year old who has had five clean sheets from his 15 starts for Portman United. They do have a back five. Rousseau on the left, Howard on the right, Mullings, Young and Mars in between. In the middle of the park, Jaquin Vos and Seagull Knight, of course, the captain. Gio Hedley, who scored against Arne Gardens in December, makes his eighth start for Portman United. And up top, Alex Marshall and Stephen Barnett. 3-5-2, a bit of a shocker that Siobhan Walsh, who scored against Arne Gardens last time out, is not in the starting lineup for Philip Williams. But yeah, Alex Marshall asked to play in the forward role, even though we have seen him in the midfield right throughout the season and one of the players of the season as well for Philip Williams, Alex Marshall. Organization, the key for Portmore, they have been very well organized, especially in the back. Stephen Young, one of the best defenders this year in the Jamaica Premier League. So one of the key Seagull Knight as well comes back into the starting lineup and wearing the captain's armband. There is a moment of silence. The first leg quarterfinal between Arnett Gardens and Port United on the way here at Sabina Park. The design of this game is going to be interesting, I reckon. I'm sure Chris Taylor will get deep into it in short order. He has mentioned one surprise with the fact that Siobhan Walsh isn't starting for Port United. Is a big surprise. Did look as if he had fully recovered from injury, Siobhan Walsh, but then I'm wondering if something reoccurred for their big number nine. Arne Gardens trying to go forward. Just a slip there by Jaquin Thomas. I actually think, and I, I said it off here, that I think he is the X Factor, Siobhan Walsh. So the fact that he hasn't started, because I thought he is the one who could really have done damage to this Arnett back line. But with him being out, I think that's a big advantage for Dixon Arnett. touches it inside, and Thomas trying to wiggle that one through to Fabian Reed, trying to set up Dixon. It was played behind him, and maybe there was a deflection because there's a rush to clear it. They put me United into touch, and it's a throw into Arnett Gardens. Arnett as well going a bit tactical. Joel Jones being left out, who has had his moments this season, and, and, and Shane Watson brought in in that centre back position. There's Xavier Gilbert, the man who's made those changes for Arnett Gardens. Rashiki Kelson, who also had a couple of exciting games towards the back end of the preliminary round, has been left on the bench to be used as an impact player. And Kimani Arboin has been given the start instead, who has a fresh air style to go with it as well, Kimani Arboin. You mentioned deep, well, certainly is the red on his head. Oh, yeah. Easily identifiable. There he is. Mm. Kimani Arboin. Red and black. Before the start of this game, 412 minutes without scoring a goal hasn't scored all 2024 
Kimani Arboin, so he's hoping to make an impact outside of the hairstyle, of course. <laughs> There's a free kick coming inside the area. It's uh, not cleared properly. Finally, the header just outside the box. Willis, we know that he can blast it from distance. Not afforded the time to shoot. Wing was robbed. But uh, some mopping up there. No issues for Shane Watson. And Eric Edwards, who has his own history with Portman United. The Arne Gardens custodian as he sends this one long, looking for Arboyne and finds him. Dixon was under pressure. Arboyne trying to keep it alive. And the clearance made by Port United. What Arboyne will give is a little bit more physicality and his work rate very good for Arne, uh, number 12. Marshall, we know that he's tricky. It was taken from him on that occasion for a throw. And even though he's listed as a forward in the 3-5-2, all season Marshall has come very deep, even below the half line to collect. Not the most convincing clearance on that occasion. And Port United will keep it. Howard. Was looking for the return. Didn't quite go in his favour. Philip Williams, of course, is the head coach of Port United. No issues here for Tyrone Williams, who's been asked to do the spectacular on quite a few occasions in goal for Port May United. Has made some stunning saves this season. Stephen Barnett looking for options. Howard. Marshall does went well to win it, gets the return, looking for runners, goes out wide. Howard delivers at the back post. Myers. Marshall turns, shoots off the bar. Warning shot from Alex Marshall. He knows how to score against Arnett Gardens, but he did do it in the cover colours of Cavalier. Two goals against Arnett, looking for his first against this club in the colours of Portman United, and he was close there. Yeah, on his weaker foot, the right. And just a little bit off his line was Eric Edwards. He would say that if it was low, he would have tipped it over the bar. He probably would have. A nice attempt from Marshall. Good to see his intent early. Interesting to see Alvarez Myers out wide at the back for Port United while Emilio Rousseau is tucked inside as one of the centre backs. That was an early season rotation. Ball played inside and Reed was trying to guide that. Goldwoods. Yeah, Philip Williams did that change early. In the early part of the season, Rudolf Austin was playing the senior statesman in the centre-back role, and Rousseau was playing out at left-back. 
And then there was a slight adjustment. Asra saw to play in a centre-back role. Worked well for him. He has adjusted well. Had the captain's armband for a while as well. And has made a difference. And seems pretty comfortable in that role as well, Rousseau. So it has given opportunity for other players in the wide areas. A.K.A. Myers coming back in. And of course, Howard. Howard has actually played both wing-backs this season. Yeah. I actually think he's, he's been a steady representative for on, Portmore. On the left? Well, left now. But he has played on the right and done it pretty well. In fact, for a lot of the season, he was right. Well, that's where we know him as. Mm. Portraying his craft really over on the right-hand side. Even at the schoolboy football level for Peter Howard. Not flashy, but consistent. Likes to get forward as well, Howard. This is the DNA of Portmore United not to be too flashy. Consistent, of course, yes. Haven't they been just consistent in this league this season and over the years? Seven yeah. Premier League titles to their name. No Premier League team has gone to the final more than Portmore. Twelve times, winning seven of them. Also the last team to win back-to-back -back titles. Well, Thompson was trying to settle. Sends it out wide, brilliant pass to Reed, who was in an offside position. Or rather it was Kahim Dixon. Not sure how it mix up the two of them. Dixon with such speed didn't have to go too early. Anyway, here's Howard. Howard's ball inside for Marshall. Getting some help. Here's a shot that's Charge down, Marshall gets it back inside the area, sets it up, trying to still not clear properly. And now they manage to clear Ronnie Gardens. Yeah, the pass needed to be better from Alvinus Myers. Lovely skill though from Alex Marshall. Here is Kimani Arboy. Arboy delivers. It's no man's land in the end. wrong address he was looking for a teammate in Tanzania where he spent a few months in the continent of Africa is that another reason for the red hair style as well well I'm not sure he didn't come back with it but yeah enjoyed his time there was a real test spoke highly of the league in Tanzania of being of a high quality Corey Bennett, the Jamaican who is in the MLS, was spent time there as well at the same club in Tanzania. Well, Corey Bennett is a coach of track and field. I'm sure you're talking Corey Burke. Burke, sorry. <laughs> I'm sure Christina will get back to that story. Well, there's not much more to tell, <laughs> apart from the fact that, yeah, Arborn enjoy, enjoyed his time. Well, here they come again, Portmore United. Was bonded over looking for the pole there. Alvin Myers. There he is, the St. Lucian. It starts the season for the 26-year-old. United showing more intent here in the opening stages of this quarter-final. David Gilbert hoping that his team will get into rhythm shortly.
power that always had difficulty in looking up directly into the lights. Martin. Watson. Willis. Going long. Going well. Kept alive too. Ball fed into Art Wine. The dew, I'm sure, is on the Sabina Park surface already, so it's going to be a little bit more slippery. The ball is going to skid away. It's going to move fast here on this surface. You can see the cricket pitch in the middle. International cricket will return to Sabina Park in May with a few T20 internationals. Trying to place that one through the middle there. Wizard with the throw. to Edwards foul on Marshall Here's Thompson now. Arboin has Myers for company. Thompson, Arboin, Wizard. Barnett trying to play Marshall in and now he goes the other way Hakeem Dixon lovely stop the end result wasn't as lovely as he tried to get the cross in the youngster yeah lots of confidence but a bit ambitious there Kaheem Dixon getting past Mullins, but I'm not sure that the strike from that kind of angle was the right idea. Should have been looking to pick out one of his teammates inside the six-yard box, and I think Fabian Reed. So much whispering that to him. <laughs> Somewhat. <laughs> Fabian Reed, of course, the older statesman there. Reed has scored four Premier League goals against Port United, but only once have the junglists come away with victory when he's on the score sheet. The flag stays down. Arboin. Ball delivered inside. Rousseau with the clearance not too far out, but Port United will settle. Barnett couldn't keep it, although he does well to win it back, utilizing his strength. Striding forward now, over striding as well, and lost it. Now Reed getting some help. 
but it was a hospital pass to Jaheim Thomas, wasn't it? Yeah, a bit too short. Good work initially by Reed. Playing with his back to goal, but Ross needed a little bit more gas, I think. It. It's a game of chess so far in this football match. Surprise, Portmore's strength has been through their spine, so they'll try and stay narrow. Headley, ball played forward, flag stays down. Marshall was trying to ship the keeper, but the flag eventually goes up. Yeah, I think Eric Edwards was, a, was in no man's land there. And even though Alex, Mar well, Alex Marshall wouldn't have known it initially, I think what he was trying to do was to scoop it over Eric Edwards, obviously. <laughs> well, that's he scoop scooped was, over everything. Yeah, everything. But. Ed was there, not so sure about his positioning, and actually could have played into the hands of Marshall. Could have. Jaheen Rose, lucky to get that bounce. Yeah, this is where they are strong, through the centre, Portmore. Yeah, there was a clip there, pretty obvious, wing goes down. I think they'll be willing to give up possession in the wide areas, Portmore, too on it guns which is where they are strong as well have the pace and so on and ensure that their middle stays tight so the ball i think their thing will be that the ball must come within the middle and then they will deal with it and if on it guns want to stay out wide then by all means what on it will have to do is to look to pull the portmore team now out of position start in the middle then go out wide and so on just to pull players out and then hopefully create some holes not a bad crowd at all for the first leg of these playoffs bigger than it was last year at this stage in fact yeah. I think a lot of credit must go to the marketers as well I think they have done a, a stellar job in this off period to promote the playoffs as well yes the football is speaking for itself as the years go by but as well it has to be well marketed and rear nephew and company doing a good job at that owen hill and his team as well yep avery campbell of course in charge of marketing absolutely stellar we've seen signs everywhere yes yeah. <laughs> sure social media oh yes crowded mm -hmm. and that's what it takes even if you do have a good product people have to know Indeed, ball touched inside, that's lovely, it's Dixon, fires it straight to the keeper. And as he runs out of the penalty area, he looks a little disappointed, because yes, there was power, but he couldn't get by Tyrone Williams. Disappointing finish from Kahim Dixon, lovely skill to, pos to put himself in a good position. Went with the outside of the boot, which was not a bad idea to go into the far corner, but instead went for pace instead of placement. And I think that was his undoing. Reed will find Dixon again. Dixon can utilize his pace along the wing. Was in a couple of minds, but an arm to the face from Amelia Rousseau, who would say that he didn't know a lot about it, but the connection was indeed made and Dixon went down. Doesn't agree with the call, Rousseau, but doesn't argue to the face of the official flounces and throws a bit of a tantrum on his way back to his area yeah but there was an arm to the face and obviously it wasn't deliberate but it impeded Dixon not so sure it wasn't deliberate but definitely a free kick well you know how defenders try to shield the ball I don't think he was aiming for the face Free kick for Arnett Gardens. Can they capitalize on this? Five players inside the box waiting on it. The header is a defensive one. It's a corner kick. Back there doing his duty. Their striker, Stephen Barnett. And it guns with a corner kick. Here's the delivery. It's not a bad one, but Williams is there to collect easily. 
just saw Benjamin Williams on the bench for Port United. He's also had a pretty decent season. Made 10 starts, seven clean sheets in those 10 starts for Benjamin Williams. Here's on it, Gardens again. Thompson tries to lay it on a platter. Well, Fabian Reed was rushing in, trying to score his fifth goal against Port United. Good defending by Rousseau. Another corner kick for Arne Gans. They have warmed up here. Philando Wing has gone across to take it. Here it comes. Again, Williams was impeded strongly. Shivani Willis, the culprit on that occasion. And he's feeling the after effects of the collision a few moments later. Big chance for Dixon earlier. Blasting it straight to Tyrone Williams. Wonderful first touch to you know. To be fair, he tried to hit it across Williams, but it was still too close. Yeah, tried to banana it, as they would say, the outside of the boot. But it started a bit too central, but yeah, I think it was the right idea to go for the far post. Actually, on the replay, he was further out than I thought. Right idea, but as I said, went for a bit too much pace. Shot on target anyway, but the first touch was lovely. That's the VIP section where you can see officials, former players, part of the group looking on at the action on the pitch. So really let you have a special class from and take it. Fifteen hundred dollars from our special class from the you mentioned in terms of the head to head between these two teams, Portmore and Anik Gardens, with Portmore coming away with a 5 1 victory in uh, one of their matchups in the 2017 18 season, it was. Fabian Reed was actually on the score sheet then. Yeah, he was a scored the, scorer. Scored the consolation yeah. for Anik Gardens. I think it was after Portmore were leading by four goals to nil. Oh, yes. So, yeah, just, just one of the biggest margin of victory between the two. Mm hmm. Barnett from distance, it goes the distance, but yeah, did mention that when he usually scores, they, <laughs> they don't, don't win. usually win, except for that one occasion in the 2013 2014 season. He did come up with a 90th minute winner, Fabian Reed 2 1 win. Renee Lloyd was the other goal scorer in that game. Sule McCullough for Portmore United. Now applies his trade with Mount Pleasant. You'll see him in a couple of weeks as they defend their title. What a season he's having as well. Oh yeah. Mount Pleasant. Can't stop scoring. Headley picks it up and then he's lost it. And Arboin has it. Arboin touches it forward. Thompson with space. Thompson drives it across. And again, again, Rousseau in the way. It was a vital clearance again by Portmore's number six. Yeah, not the cleanest delivery from Thompson, but he was looking for Reed. Anxious for more goals, Reed, the 84 goal man. Fabian Reed. Of current players, none have more than him.
wizard to take it. Didn't do a lot with it. I'm sure if you'll be playing long enough, Fabian Reed, but you never know to disturb the top position. Kevin Leamy has a record with 115 goals in his Premier League career, which spanned 18 years. I think he just, needs, Leamy. He just needs, what, two more seasons after this? 16 and 15, 31 more goals. He can do it in a couple of seasons, can he? Devon Hodges in the second position with 106. That's a lovely touch, you know, from Dixon. Dixon utilizing his pace well. Trying to get it across. Another deflection. It's another corner kick to Anik Gardens. He's a handful. He is a handful, Kahim Dixon. Wing to deliver. There's the delivery. Kept alive. Reed. Now with it. Sends it high inside the box. Looking for Dixon. The header away from Barnett. Turned into trouble. And Portmore trying to capitalize. Barnett coming forward. Moving away from a challenge. Trying to find Howard. But uh, back there is Shane Watson. Appropriately named. Seeing that he's at Savannah Park, Shane Watson. For those not in the know, Shane Watson is a former Australian cricketer. Download the Sportsmax app today from the Google Play or the App Store. Just keep in touch with all the happenings on the app. We've got a lot in store for you. Remember, the Olympics are later this year in Paris. For that alone, you should download the Sportsmax app. But there's also the remainder of the Premier League season. And of course, we do have the Champions League as well. And of course, when schoolboy football comes around in Jamaica and Trinidad and Tobago, we have that for you too. Not much need to continue watching the Europa League, though. Ball comes inside. Not clear properly. The finish off the post. Barnett again. Misses on the second attempt. But boy, wasn't that close. For Port United to go ahead. And Barnett almost picked up his second goal this season. It's just not been his season, Stephen Barnett, in terms of goal scoring. One of the times he had in the colors of Dumble Holden but again oh so close but yet so far should have been putting that away yeah beyond Eric Edwards yeah it's been that type of season unfortunately for Barnett Marshall now Knight Knight we know that he can crack it from distance but there was a defender in the way and now they are forced to defend and now Brian looking for the right pass he's found it does Reed have support trying to find Dixon Home United will come away with it. Only just. He's in pain, Dixon. He needs some help. I think Howard might have stepped on him inadvertently. Just the initial pain. See here. I think it's right. Yeah. Stepped on the inside of the instep. Yeah, there's no protection first. there. It does sting at first, but after the initial pain, it will go away pretty quickly. Might be sore tomorrow, though.
really impressive. The venue and what we're seeing. Called out a few members of the team. Left out Stephen Douglas, who's the one in charge of marking as well. Just a wonderful occasion so far at the start of these playoffs. We'll be at Sabina Park up until the second leg semi. And of course, the final will be held at, held at the National Stadium. Marshall picks it up, finds Barnett again. Barnett can lace it, decides against it. You can sense probably the confidence just dwindling a bit. Arboin has it. Wing can't keep it in. It's a struggle, you know. I mentioned before about the dew here at Sabina Park and surely playing a factor with the, the way the ball is traveling on the surface. Even though these teams haven't been playing here regularly this season, they have been playing over the last few seasons. Something that they would have known about, but yes, as the night goes on, as the evening stretches on, the dew factor means as well that you will have to prepare early. The bird will come at you a lot quicker. And you have to temper the weight on some of those passes. The surface will do the job for you. Still, I've always enjoyed playing football on this surface, though. Allows for the beautiful game. It does. It was always going to be a close contest. Kept alive by our boy. Young with the clearance. Howard with it now. Under pressure. Young. Lovely ball over the top. Safety first. with a long throw and uh, now home United will have a corner kick So whipping that one inside had a vital hand there Edwards drilled across brilliantly saved by Edwards again Barnett can't get another shot off but again he's involved oh that's not headed properly Dixon trying to apply the pressure and does finds Reed Reed forced to go wide lovely turn and then the challenge coming in from Howard, corner kick to Anik Gardens. 
Edwards is down. There's also a player down in goal. There's a little for inside. Edwards got a vital hand on it. That it came across, hit Barnett. <laughs> Yeah, he didn't know a lot about it. He was involved right throughout, Barnett. Yep. You always have to look out for Young when it comes to those aerial balls inside the area. The ball almost just hit Barnett. And as you said, he didn't know much about it. Ricocheted off him. Is that Young on the turf? Yeah, I think he. there was a collision. Not sure if it was with the keeper or with a defender when he, when he went for the header. Barnett sees the funny side of it. He's had the best chance for Portmore. Barnett came off the upright. Marshall dis discussing things as well in the first, say, 10 minutes of play. Marshall was very involved, but is struggling a bit since. Let's go to Janae. She's in the stand somewhere. Janae, where are you? Yes, Donald, I'm here with Arna Gardens fans. Remind me of your name again. My name is Anise Girl. Yes, nice. Yes, girl, you're, you're, here. <laughs> you're here supporting Arna Gardens, a team that has a lot of marketing. The community is being and the support is strong. Talk to me about this and, 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 and how you're feeling with this player so far. I'm not excited. I'm not excited. I'm not excited. I'm not excited. I'm one and it, three and it. But last year they were so close, but yet so far. You think that this year they're going to come out with the victory? I'm not going to lie. We got it this year. We're going to win them this year. One jungle is the same way. Right, let's go. All right, I need to ask you, do you have a favorite player on the team? Fabian Reed. Okay. You know that when the arm the other day, Fabian Reed got engaged? Yes, it, yes, we, we understand. We know this. <laughs> we are not. Well, we're going to watch the rest of this match. They are playing for more United, a strong team who are creating a lot of chances, as we just saw a while ago. But do you think that Arne Gardens will come up with us? Our team are going to Well, Port United, they have the advantage in the 41st minute of play. Alex Marshall creating it on the left-hand side and drilling it across. And uh, you thought that Arne Gardens would have gotten away with it. But in the end, it, it did cross the line. I'm not sure how Barnett was involved, but we're taking a look at it. That was a brilliant first touch from Marshall. And then it's an own goal, I reckon. Yeah, it, Jaheen Rose hit it first time. I think it came off the upright from Rose. It did. Lovely pass from Marshall. Should have had the assist. I'm not sure how Jaheen Rose managed to miss that. Look at this. How did he miss that? It's an own goal. It yeah, is an own goal off the wing. Well, it's unfortunate for Annie Gardens. But yeah, they were unlucky. Port United with a couple of chances there. But they were on, they were fortunate with that last bit of action. With Wayne conceding the own goal, but again, Marshall, the instigator, with a wonderful first touch inside the box. Here's Marshall again. Three minutes away from the halftime interval. Wizard. Martin trying to play that further inside. How will Anikan respond here?
Arboin couldn't keep that one inside. Edwards calm on the pressure on that occasion. Martin with a little space to work with. Yeah, wing needs to settle again. Here they come. Myers overcooked it. Minutes ago, plus time added for stoppages. Howard. Lovely. But Edwards read the play. Martin gets it back. Watson. Ambitious ball forward through the middle there. Four minutes of stoppages to be played. Wing looking for the give and go. On a gardens looking to keep the pressure on nice from Dixon and uh, that's put behind there was some pressure there on young Thomas yeah I think Rousseau's knee went into the back of Thomas's head as well just look at it here looking to get the goal kick kicked it off that could be very painful there I hope he's okay in the soft area as well. Yeah, Russo knew it immediately and, and went to to cater to his need at the moment. Yeah, it was a, a tough connection made. Yeah, it was totally exposed to him, Thomas, because he had fallen. So sliding in, so would have gone with the full brunt of that left yeah. boot with the studs exposed as well into the back of the head. And as I said, very delicate area there. So let's hope he's okay, Jaheim Thomas. Wouldn't be surprised if there's a bit of a graze there because it would have been the studs and probably pick up a cocoa, as they would say. Well, apparently the last touch came off Dixon. He did. Add, to add insult to the yeah. injury. That's what I was saying. He wanted to ensure he got the goal kick, Rousseau. What he didn't know is that yeah, he might have been beheading Thomas as well. All of a sudden, Pope United, they have a lot of space to operate in, all beating their own half. Now they stride forward. Barnett around the corner to Howard. Couldn't keep it in play. Howard will receive a yellow card. Really silly.
17 starts before this game for the 21 year old goes into the referee's book Howard and that could play a big part as this game goes on still in the first half to give away a silly one like that one of the most foul players in the league Alex Marshall most definitely yeah coming deep yet again continue to work at his fitness He's very fit Alex Marshall well, Dixon has been in the wars hasn't he lost it on that occasion the battle at any rate thinking of a shot Headley finds Marshall skips away from one tries to get by a second there was a, a clash of knees there I think I think that's a foul though I think it, I'm not sure who made the challenge but it certainly looked as if they came across Alex Marshall <laughs> that's the end of the first half referee has seen enough and it's been an interesting first half and uh, put me united with the advantage alex marshall has been a handful for the honor gardens defense discombobulated at the back fill under wing with the own goal the hand of apology at the end of the first half and uh, both teams will recuperate and uh, get the orders from the coaching staff as they prepare for the second half. Philip Williams can't afford to smile at the moment. Steve Barnett has had several opportunities but has been able to convert. And uh, after 45 minutes, Port United with the advantage over Arnett Gardens by a goal to nil. 